Hi guys, welcome back to the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube channel and today we're setting up a new palette. So um, a while back, actually around Christmas time, I got the Core High Chroma set which is a set of six um, five mil tubes of Core paint and then earlier this year during a sale, I think on Jackson's, it was in one of my very first art hauls on this channel, I got the Earth set from Core as well. So now I have 12 of the Core colours um, in their 5 mil tubes and um, what I really wanted to do was create a core palette so I have this 18 well palette that I got from Amazon I believe I will leave a link to this and everything else in the description box below um, and yeah so we're gonna fill it up it's got 18 wells in it and like I said I had 12 core colors so what I decided to do was go through my stash of paints and pick out some colors to sort of fill in the gaps of the core colors that I had to um, create a more well-rounded, somewhat well-rounded palette for today. So I've su I've uh, supplemented with a few other colors from other brands. I think there's a Shin Han paint, there's a couple of Sennelier paints, a Winsor & Newton, Daniel Smith, and a couple of Lucas paints as well. So I will again um, leave links to where you can purchase these paints, and I will also leave a list of all the different colors that I've um, used in this palette as well for you guys in the description box below. Um, please bear in mind that some of the links below are affiliate links and all that means is if you purchase something using one of those links then I get a small percentage commission. It doesn't affect the price that you pay but it really helps me and the channel out a lot and I really appreciate it. Okay, so I'm not sure if I actually introduced myself properly. My name is Mina and um, on this channel we do art stuff. So let's get to prepping this palette. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the paints and then I'll do a bit of a swatch as well and then in a separate video I'll do a bit of a paint with me using this palette so we can see how it works. Okay so I thought whilst I do the palette pour at the beginning here I would talk you through a little bit more about um, these core watercolours and um, some of their unique features so actually before I get into that what you can see me using there is a tube ringer to get the last bits of paint out of this tube of Daniel Smith uh, lemon yellow <laughs> so you'll see me using that a couple of times in this um, section but it's a really handy little gadget to get the most out of your tubes of paint Okay, so Core say that they have created these watercolours as a more modern variation on watercolour. Um, they claim that they retain the best they retain the best qualities of traditional watercolours while expanding the range and versatility of each colour. Core's exclusive binder Aquasol um, produces a greater density of colour than conventional watercolours, offering vivid depth of colour with every brush stroke brush stroke. Wow words. So um, Core has their own um, Aquasol binder which doesn't use the traditional gum Arabic. Um, it's also entirely vegan as well as they do not use any, they don't use traditional oxgall, they use a synthetic alternative. So the unique core formula gives vibrant, intense colours that stay brilliant even after they dry. Um, it provides the subtlety, transparency and flow of a great watercolour with colours that have as much vibrancy as those of acrylic or oil paint. Um, and yeah, so they claim lots of great things. And I do find that their colours are really bright. Um, they have pretty intense flow and you'll see that when we get to the swatching section that compared to some of the other watercolours that are in this um, palette now, some of the other brands that I have included that um, aren't core, you'll see the difference between the flow in some of those and the core paints. It's not to say that the other ones don't flow, it's just that the core paints really flow quite intensely. For that reason these paints probably aren't the best for people who are complete beginners to watercolour because that flow can be really intense and well it is uncontrollable to an extent but you have to know how to work with it to um, get the results you want otherwise you could get quite fr I can imagine you could get quite frustrated and I know that if I would started using these watercolours at the very beginning when I first started painting and I'm not like super experienced I've only been doing this for about a year and a half um, 
I know I would have probably been incredibly frustrated at the time. And even now, it's going to take a while for me to get used to them. I haven't really painted with core watercolours that much at all. Um, other than like playing around a bit when I first got them with some um, little dollops of paint on a palette. So that's why I wanted to set up this palette. I want to get used to using them and just get some more practice with them. And yeah, and see how it goes. See how I like them. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the swatching portion and again I'm going to start by pre-wetting the paper so you can really get an idea of the flow for some of these paints. Now this first one is uh, Lemon Yellow by Daniel Smith and that's pigment PY175 and you can see this one has reasonable flow, um, kind of like what you'd think of as like the standard sort of amount of flow then we have lucas um, watercolors in gamboge that's py153 and this one doesn't have as much flow as the daniel smith then we have the first core watercolor in quinacridone gold po48 and py150 and you can see how that just moves whooshes across the wet swatch there really well um, and this is a pretty uh, common sort of um, combination of pigments for a quinacridone gold hue. Then we have of course transparent pyrrole orange which again you can see that really intense flow and it creates those like spider web like fingers um, in the paint in the swatch. And that's uh, PO71 for the transparent pyrrole orange. Then we have a Sennelier colour, um, the Rose Dore Madder Lake which is PR255, it's quite an orangey red but it's a really beautiful colour similar to like a Scarlet Lake. And then we have Windsor & Newton's Windsor Red which is PR254 which I believe that's also known as Pyrrole Red or Pyrrole Red. And again the Windsor & Newton has kind of a medium-ish amount of flow like this particular one doesn't have a ton of flow but also the amount of flow you get will depend on how wet your paper is as well and if it's too wet or not wet enough it's all a bit of a balancing act. Next up we have Lucas Elizer and Crimson PR176 and you can see this one has some nice flow to it. It's that lovely sort of carmine pigment the PR176. And then we have Kors Quinacridone Magenta. This is a really beautiful version of Quinacridone Magenta. I, I definitely really like this one. Um, and again, with that flow, you can see some of that whooshing colour floating across the page there. Next, we have Kors Dioxazine Violet, which is PV23. This one is pretty intense and also very very flowy I mean you can see that just runs across the swatch there so um, this is what I mean by it not necessarily being great for beginners because if you're new to it and you're trying to like master like the wet and wet stuff this can really go wild and again with indigo the same thing cause indigo again very wishy you get those like little spindly fingers coming through you can still see the ghost of some of that on the violet swatch then we have Sennelier's French Ultramarine. This one actually does have a fair bit of flow to it as well, um, which is interesting because Ultramarine being a granulating pigment typically doesn't flow as much as some other paints. Um, but it's a really lovely shade of Ultramarine. And then next up we have Kors Cobalt Teal, which is PG50. Now this one is interesting because granulating pigments and granulating colors tend to be a little bit the pigment tends to be a little bit heavier so it doesn't flow as much typically but even this one has a pretty decent flow on the paper then we have cause sap green which is made of pg36 pr101 and py150 so it's quite an interesting blend of colors there but it's a really beautiful sort of sap green almost verging on like the olive side and you saw there it had again really good flow with those like little spindly fingers showing up in the swatch again um you, you might be able to see that the sizing at the edge of the paper closest to at the bottom of the screen is a little bit off which is why it's causing that weird mottled effect that's not the paints that's the paper then we have shin hands Thalo Green Dark. Now I had decided to add this as my dark green because I don't really like Thalo 
green on blue shade on my palette but I know it's a really good mixing color but this version is has the PG7 mixed with PBR7 so it's a bit more earthy it's a little bit less garish and I wanted to add it to my palette to get um, some use out of it and to kind of see how I like it next up we had cause Naples yellow it's not my favorite Naples yellow I kind of wish I didn't put it in this palette but I wanted to use all the core colors that I had uh, so I have added it so we'll see how I end up using it then we have cause Venetian red which again had really beautiful flow has a really lovely pinkish undertone which I really like then we have cause transparent brown oxide and this was the only one of the core paints that was a little bit streaky going down but that could just be because the paint hadn't um, dried yet none of the paints are dried yet so hopefully once it's dried it won't be quite as streaky and then lastly we have cause raw umber natural now I'm not a huge fan of raw umber but this one isn't the worst the one thing I realized after the fact after I'd done all of this is that I'd missed out cause green gold which I do have a tube of but it had fallen out of like the area where I'd put all the paints together so I have now gone back and added a small half pan into the palette with cause green gold poured in um, so that is in my palette now it's just not included in this video so you'll see that in the next video when I do a paint with me so thank you so much for joining me today I will see you guys again soon don't forget to like and subscribe until next time bye bye